So the title of this spoken word poetry piece is The Masks We Wear. This is me and this is all you're going to get. I say this in the bet with myself that this will sound empowering, that I will have shown that I've grown all of this towering above the rest of my thoughts to make any sense of what I might want to make of this presentation. Uh, suppose a contemplation of how I've grown, changed, become something. How the hell should I know what that is? I've been thinking about what kind of sense I can make, shake out of this brain of mine, a mind that seems to rattle about in this head of mine as if I were panning for a goal that I know I don't want, but I think that other people want to see something that will possibly justify me leaving, impeding the seemingly logical progression of life of going from preschool to kindergarten to primary to middle, oh God, middle school, <laughs> and high school to undergraduate to postgraduate study to start to work to starting a family to pension with a hopeful retention of my life's work and then death and then nothing and then <laughs> so, okay hold on there's an audience right there maintaining a pretty steady stare that seems to be asking what is he doing <laughs> uh, okay become look at your palms and ask yourself what you've done what have I learned? How have I changed, if at all? Have I changed the world yet? Am I now through the wave of a wand made of inspiring quotations, supportive flotation devices and seminars, mentor meetings, work projects, hours of self-reflection? Well, am I now a good person? Does that even matter? What do I know? Who am I? What are the masks that I've been wearing? You know, masks, the outer mask that you use to present yourself to different people and the inner one that shows who you truly are and a third kind of mask that other people make for us as a slight paraphrase of Jean-Paul Sartre go. <laughs> and so I will try to explain, frame what I mean when we wear masks. This, however, is not an easy task as masks are intricate things many, with many layers encoding to them in a constant adjustment for what they might be needed for and for what the person Behind the mask has become, I will attempt to strum the strings of my soul to see where my masks are from. The mask you wear at birth is mostly translucent, thin, highly permeable. There's not much there to present, not much nuance feeling present that would determine the finer details of the mask. You have just enough coding to cover how the world can see you as a baby blob. You have just enough layering to determine how much enters through the mask into your mind. You have, therefore, the strong foundation to support the many masks you're going to wear as a result of your growth. Your mask is the perception and presentation of you or a part of you. It is a multifaceted thing that works with a lot of glue of experience that sticks together the individual parts, that changes thick uh, Thickness, texture, and integrity, elasticity, plasticity for how it uh, for how it sticks on, grows on, or through you. Though people might say that you are a baby, and maybe at least then you are pure. Well, a baby is still perceived. There's still some way that that you see that almost person, all human blob. Yes, apparently I see babies as human blobs. Get over it. <laughs> So yes, even babies wear masks of presentation. But what if not, what if, what if the mask if babies don't hide what they feel or think when they cry or might laugh out loud, babies don't shape their masks late at night in the attempt to represent themselves the next. Because with the palms of babies that are so slight and non tension they couldn't quite make a mask yet. And yet they start with two to their name. The one that people make out of maybes to place on the babies every time they see them and the uh, and the mask they cover up, their me, their actual identity of their soon-to-be child, not blob. So the inside of this mask resides with a readiness to pump out all the design, the paint, the glue, whatever materials are required to face their life. So yes, mask you wear used to be as thin as a film and ready to change as you grow. It flows into new directions with care, with design or non-design, as who you become starts to seep out, coloring your mask. You will always have the inner mask. Sinner or grin or beginner, enter your true mask is there as your mask starts to thicken on your face, though it just seems to appear like a lotion that instead of soaking in, 
soaks out. This mask may never be stagnant, no fragments in its steely place, but it's still who you really are. Experiences around you catalyzing with your pre-existing mask, forming a design that might just be divine. Now, our true mask is, of course, never complete, so I'll not label it as a dumb feat, but as our outer masks go, they usually serve the purpose of presenting, preventing direct inspection, conforming to society's perception we have masks layered on top of our true mask that distort it. Presenting things in high relief and adding to it in the belief that those are the things that people want to see. And so to get away from the theoretical propheticals to something slightly more manageable and tangible, what masks do I wear? I went on this trip in the attempt to tear away my mask. Couldn't bear the idea that I would go along with a supposed progression of life not knowing who I was, not knowing I could be me. Couldn't bear the idea that I would be looking at a mask that hadn't itself seen the world yet. I, and seen the world that I, that, had, that I had been shaped by, a world I was hoping to improve, find my groove to work in. So, why was I hiding, not confiding about my true mask? How did I was, how did what I was hiding, questioning, reveal about the mask I was holding, molding? What did I think that people wanted to see? What did my feeble attempt to be not reveal to me? Before TBB, I decidedly want to understand how different my outer mask truly was from my inner mask. The problem I found, though, was that if I tried to shape it with my own hands, I would slip trip on the attempt, feeling contempt for my inability to, control, inability to control me. All I felt like I could do was conform to what wanted to be seen. But as easy as it is to blame society for sobriety, non-emotionality, defacement and debasement of who I was, well, I also have myself to blame. Can claim that my inner fears of the thoughts of my peers often left me broken inside bringing shards of protection to my inner mask and anxious layer of metallic concealment to my outer, which would be hopefully impenetrable, but malleable like copper to make a proper appearance. The production centers of my masks worked with instructions of should be, have to be, want to be me's, which is not to say that I hadn't defied that, not to say that I hadn't tried to conform to the standards of the love of my friends and people I cared about. But those shards of my inner mask were deep. Fashioned from the designs of self-doubt that I just didn't know enough about myself and the world to actually do anything. Bouts of lacking trust in myself and others. Unrealistic standards for just about everything I do and the people I interacted with made of feelings of self-supposed emasculating existence. The persistence in the feeling that I don't belong, that all I am is wrong and thereby the first layer of my outer mask was formed. The rest of it forming around the steely protection in my perception was made of a dazzling array of lenses. Bended and warped in the freak attempt to only show what I wanted them to, successfully too through the fact that I had good traits, that I was able, but the fable I was displaying with them never felt complete without the strong flow of worries and doubts and non-trust that would re uh, rust and weaken the metal so that on occasion they would brittle through for me and you leaving exposure my steely composure which would however 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 be replaced either through lessons learned or, learned or quick patches made of anger at, la at, at having let someone see a truer part of me and so was born a mask of hope fear and concealment Hope that, would, that I would learn to cope and cover the things I didn't want to be. Hope that I could still do good as I should. Concealment to try and hide myself away so that a better version of me could be. And fear for the fact that I wouldn't be stable, able, that I would fall, follow the call of the void to try and fake the felt, fake, break the fake I felt was suffocating me. I needed to be free. I wanted to be free. So I set to work on my new... TBB mask. It would be intricate and made of clever design. It would be drawn with a steady hand. It would be made of bands of strength and empowering words. It would be close to who I should be. Again, it was made of the clever books I was reading and the ideas and anecdotes I could share and all the supposedly great things I had. 
it was yet another mask of lenses that was based on the good intention of retention of who I was, but it still followed the convention I thought would be there. It still was just another layer to thicken my outer mask. There I was on my first days of TPP with a mask of seeming composure, balance, and calm. Come before a storm, so it seemed, I would grab, stab at my mask in the form of what is development and who am I seminars? How do you develop the world if you aren't fully developed yourself? And what does that actually mean? Does anybody actually know what they're doing? What was this screen that seemed to cover the development industry more mess and misery than it seemed? And how do we go around not understanding who people truly are and why has it gone so far? As more time would pass, I felt like I would chisel more and more away from what this mask was, bran was branching a mental map and marker to highlight the different parts of my coding, preparing for a surgery, a purge of me of the things I didn't want. But it wouldn't be fair to say that it was that easy. It wasn't like I knew where to draw the line, often so fine, hidden and unbidden, distorted and reported so that I wouldn't even know where to start. It's not like I could take a metaphorical anvil to my metaphorical face to metaphorically shatter and morph my metaphorical representation of my soul. Couldn't personify my mask so that it could speak out its flaws for me. No one could find the answer for me. So what did this trip flip? A chip in this mask of mine, the way I can explain it and contain my answer into something slightly shorter is to say that my mask changed from different angles. The TBB one that I wondered about, that I thought I couldn't do it without, the one that lets us become better agents of change, or at least lets us think about it. Everything is optional, after all. Um, well, how did this wand help this person right here? Well, a few of the things I realized to be major distortions in my mask before TBB, made of trust issues and masculinity immobility, those things I only demarked out later. Only recently did I find the parts of my mask that I hid away. But what provided the energy to find, to break, turns out to be hard to see for the, hard to see yet still a threat to the me of pre-TVB. Mm -hmm. A big, big impact were the seminars, the, we have come so far, as, but the world is pretty mm -hmm. shit, if you think about it, sessions. <laughs> the hours that would attempt the barrage on our mask, in the form of what for me was the inner battle of feeling versus thinking, emotionality versus rationality, the warm and soft skill versus the hard world skill, a battle of epic proportions. For me, these two sides of who I was showed up in the clash in my mask, which started from my brain with the strategy of facts and reason, with the design of triangles without tangles, and from my heart with an approach of hopeful emotion with bursts of color and curls, clashing in the middle at my throat, a stormy commotion, a continuous battle of promotion for what side of me could voice itself. It seemed that these two parts of me were confronted together and alternating who am I and what is development sessions, sessions of contemplating confessions and comments, bombardments of ideas that would hopefully superimpose what the true parts of this world might, might be, no more ignorant bliss, complacement, debasement of other views, I was through with not knowing how I could make the world a better place. Didn't want to leave a trace that I wasn't worldly, wanted to discuss public health, education, sustainable agriculture, the environment in one foul swoop, read everything I could as I felt I should be the smartest in the crowd. Which wanted to be, wanted to show that I belonged, that I did know stuff, which I did, but I certainly wouldn't know everything. What I can say, say, though, for example, is that the Millennium Development Goals from the United Nations, though in good intention to improve the world, maybe didn't, truly. Not because of time or money, not only, but because of broad-ranging statistics, found specifics, because we have health patients and no patients to see them as humans because of children and not knowing how to build them up and not down, because of seeing beef and not cows, vows to feed the world, but none to keep it going, because of all the waste we make in the seeming haste to use up what seems to be only our world to take, because they don't actually have a monopoly on truth. And don't actually know what it means to be developed, that it often holds true only to the use out there and to no one else. 
learning these things and so much more not only shaped my masks design, but my method of design for the world around me, the questions of what is development allowed me to make a new mask for the world I face every day. A mask that I knew might still be wrong, but not for long, if only keep my mask from covering my ears as long as I keep listening. And so the what is development seminars quenched my thirst for more knowledge most of the time. But so much of what I was learning though was about perception, preconception of what the world was and who the people in it seemed to be. So who are we to say that we were learning about the world? Who are we? The who am I seminars were about who are you and who am I, who are we together in a cultural contemplation, preventing potential misidentification of who we truly are inside and out. They serve to guide us in the interpretation and navigation of our masks. The sessions that left the strongest impressions of my online were mostly the gender ones, the tender gender enders that would question and explore issues of femininity and masculinity and everything in between, displaying beautiful spectrums that would layer on top of each other, creating a way to say that we can display our outer mask in whatever shade we'd like, or have no shade at all, and the shades we'd be attracted to meant nothing at all as long as you love. I will never forget about the masculine living, the masculine living, not a clever phrase I came up with, but a documentary we watched, challenging the social norms, the forms of society used to make supposed men out of boys, mere toys of some entity of society that, pardon me, seemed to try to find ways to fuck us up in countless ways. Frustration and anger at who we weren't occurred, I inferred that I just wasn't. Men are supposed to be strong, have bulging muscles, should not show emotion unless indulging in anger. Men should be loud, should gun, shoot guns for fun, play video games, drink beer. Men are rational, are rationed in all their fears. Men are supposed to perform. But I, I just couldn't conform. Though I look a guy, have a deep voice and do sports, I don't quite seem to fit the norm, don't feel like I fit the norm. I am a man, but why do I feel so wrong? Why do I have this incessant voice in my head of you don't belong? Is it because I cry more than others? Play music, do theaters, musicals, never in tights because man forbid I seem flimsy. Is it because I care about being nice to my peers? The sheer fact that I fear being queer because people might not care for me if they knew I was. Years went by of me trying to adjust my mask with war patterns, of making it hard and non-emotional, devotional only to the rational side of life. I slowly became aware of my standards of masculinity before TPB. But the incessant questioning of who are you truly started to sponge away the war pattern and drenched my hard shell and shards and tears so that they could start to brittle away with time. I'm not my mask. What a sham to fall away. Finally, my truer self is on display. I could finally play this game of life by my own rules. But I've still been wearing a mask for this presentation. And I'll get right back to the self-empowering words and the spoken word poetry rhyming in a second. But I just wanted to acknowledge something that my mentor, Patrick, drove home for me after my first presentation to our group. I've been presenting this poem in a way that is acceptable for a man. I had some calm explanations for what masks were and how they grew. I had some small jokes thrown in here and there to make me seem witty and lighthearted, like I don't actually take myself too seriously. Mm -hmm. Rather than crying about the shitty stuff that I've been dealing with, I've been showing myself in an angry light, which is definitely part of what I've been feeling, but it, I'm, it's definitely not the whole story either. And the truth that I'm able to formulate for this presentation, I'm often moody. I have an affinity for being dark and gloomy, and I'm possibly way too contemplative about the meaning of life and sociological structures and behavioral patterns that might be normal for a person my age. <laughs> it feels like I spend way too, much, way too much time questioning myself and the things I do and the people I interact with. I'm afraid of being left alone. And yet I spend so much time being afraid of interacting with my friends that I don't actually show them the love that they deserve. Don't show them the love I actually feel. I feel like I'm just a small boy who is too scared to talk to people. 
or if I do let myself get close enough to them, momentarily denying the idea that they might reject and abandon me, like many of my friends have done in the past when they've moved away, well, I feel like there's too much responsibility for these interpersonal relationships that I just couldn't do enough to make them happy. I'm sad for all the times I've missed out to reach out to people. And the dozens of times I've looked at the script for this presentation in my attempt to be really deep and emotional and truly vulnerable, I can only say that this presentation has made me feel sad and raw and weak. Made me feel like I was digging at my flaws and things that I struggle with over and over and over again. I'm not perfect, I'm far from it. It feels like my mind is made of contradiction that I let out on myself and others. And now I'm afraid truly afraid of how I'm perceived and how I will be perceived by my family and friends back home after TBB, if I choose to show them that my mask has changed. I am devastated that TBB is over. I've cut about it in the last two weeks, in short bursts though, because I still feel like I have to keep it together, but I am sad. I might not be able to truly show it in the setting, but believe me when I say that I am but I am also extremely grateful for everything that TBP has provided me. I'm grateful for all the experiences I could have abroad, all the NGOs that work with us in each country, but most importantly, the amazing people that I've met on this trip, both the people that we've now left behind, but also the ones who have come along for this incredible journey. That was not necessarily about trying to run away from college, not really, but it truly became about finding out who we are, and what the world is and how we can work at it. And I also want to dedicate this presentation to my mentor and friend, Patrick, who pushed me harder than he might know, either through various conversations or just by showing me that I can be who I am and that I don't need to be my hardest critic, that things will be okay, that a game of cards can save the world for just being present in my journey in his own way. Thank you. But for now, let's get to the poetic deconstruction and self-empowerment, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> I am not my mask, what a sham to fall away. Finally, my true self is on display. I could finally play this game of life by my own rules. I could take what, what we had learned in seminars and the things now afar, my homesick families that all took us in with love and care and food. So much food, <laughs> so much food, so much rice. Potatoes, <laughs> but outside, they made homes away from home in cultures and, and different and exotic, not always toxic, but welcoming. They showed us a world that ran by different rules to our own rules that didn't have to be. And all the things we did outside seminars seemed to us without bars, jumping bridges, hiking, climbing mountains, metaphorical and not, racing in tuk-tuks, seeing yet another world wonder. Bathing elephants, seeing the real equator, not the French one. <laughs> Walking in the path of the Incas, sharing love with each other as one family. Redefining what it meant to be here. There are things that I now know and know I won't know now, but later there are things that I have yet to learn. There are words I have yet to redefine, there are nouns and verbs of action that I have yet to make, and there are adjectives that I have yet to learn to accept for my masks. I still have a lifetime of work ahead of me to let my inner mask become something even more beautiful, so to let my masks become something something more like it. A lifetime of a lifetime to learn to acknowledge the masks that people make for me, but not to fear them. That the maybes and should be's that these masks are made of don't have to be me. Despite my supposed empowerment of saying that this is me and this is all you're going to get, I have learned that we still always wear masks of presentation and perception. That this me that I'm speaking of can never be known truly by people around me. That only through the bit by bits that we are willing to share with the ones we care for can we peek behind that mask. I've learned that we always change, that the range of who we are is endless and the way we show ourselves too, and the world is complex and sore. I can't say that TBB has made me free. Not at all. It feels like it took an actual anvil to my face, made of the waves of Plettenberg Bay, an avalanche from the Himalayan mountains of Palampur, a hoe from the farming villages of Donjiang, and 
the pollen branches and trees that we planted in Kaguana. I still need to collect and reflect on the shards that the places we have visited have broken out of me. No, I can't say that TPB has made me feel very free yet. But I can say that I've learned that I am my mask, but my mask is me. director that I was um, that I was with for the last play that I was in um, basically just threw the whole idea of character out the window. He's like, we don't know who we are. How do we know who someone else is? And so there is a certain freedom in sort of just throwing that question out the window as well. And so I just wanted to mention that. Like, kudos. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. oh. Hi. So um, I did TV last year. And um, so we watched The Mask You Live In when we were in Virginia. Where, just like, where did y'all watch? In India, of all okay. places. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, we watched it as part of the Who Am I's, which I, I'm sure are new this year. Um, yeah. They did the last Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Um, cool. So, is masculinity something that you've like thought about? Um, yes and no. It's definitely not something that I've formulated for myself in this kind of way, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. Middle school, high school was just times of me trying to find myself um, within what the standards of masculinity were. Like, I did theater and I, I sang, and I mostly was the only guy in my middle school and high school that did it in the way that I did it. Um, so, mostly like, learning about myself, learning about TVB, learning to live in other places, it was just mostly accepting that masculinity is a broad spectrum. They can make what you are. Um, and that I am a man, I don't have to, you know, right, I am a man. So I sort of feel like a boy. <laughs> but, yeah, things are what you would make. How do you think you're being in a group of, you know, mainly women, while you're exploring the issue of kind of being a man, like, how do you think that informed it? Or, um, honestly, before TV, I was uh, I was pretty worried about the fact that I would be one of three guys. Um, like, like, what is gonna happen? I mean, like, <laughs> um, I've been friends with with girls like all my life, and it's natural. So, like, it was just like a weird worry. But I think the women on this trip have taught me more about what it means to be a man than many men I've encountered. Um, in a way that is just about showing your whole humanity. And while, I mean, like, I do display some bad traits, um, <laughs> but it's like, it's acknowledging that, you know, I fill into some stereotypes, but I don't fill into all, and that's okay. Um, so the women have definitely taught me different ways of living and to be who you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 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 